Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. Now, Aremo, what would you describe as your greatest achievement as a two-time governor of Ogun State? Well, without being the greatest, I can tell you that my penetration into rural areas of Ogun State still remain a benchmark. Mm. The likes of Kibisho Nobanjo created infrastructural facilities for a new state like Ogun State. But when I got in, I followed this first step. I decided mm -hmm. to open up the rural areas because Ogun okay. State, we, we are village people. Mm -hmm. then, as I tell you, I electrified hundreds of villages. I opened them up with electrification. My rural roads are still, some of my rural roads are still some of the best in Ogun State. I concentrated one on education before I became governor. Primary, primary school students were carrying desks. From home to school. I was the one who started paying the West African Examination Council for all students because uh, a good student who has no means suddenly finds himself not able to pay for, for work. We are destroying uh, uh, geniuses. And then uh, I can tell you, in terms of infrastructural facilities, apart from education, road network, rural development, I also ensured that the civil servants were fully motivated. By the time I became governor, we were owing the military left six months salaries of, of civil servants unpaid. And the civil of teachers unpaid. In 1999, by the end of 1999, I had cleared all those people. Pensioners, yeah. their pensions were in arrears. By the time I spent two, two years in office, I had cleared all the In the state, in my time, salaries were paid. As I went to, in actual fact, civil servants salary were paid around 23rd or 24th of the month. Wow. I never owed a day salary. Uh, and at festival, by the time Christ, by the Christmas time on the 19th or 20th of December, we could take uh, civil servants were paid salaries for them to have something mm. in their pocket for Christmas. That, mm. that, that, that was the system. And I can tell you, I restored part of my program was to restore wholesome water water uh, to air, all the areas in the state. In my time, mm. there was no urban center that didn't have pipe bomb water supply. Shagabu, Idebode, mm. Idebugo, Abakuta, Ilaru, Ota, uh, uh, Ifo. Everywhere I made sure that water flowed because you reduce health problem. That is the mm. best area of primary health care where you supply treated water. Well, I can mm. tell you that those are some of the things I'm proud to say that uh, I did in my time with little money. Right. Little money. Yeah. Mm. So, Arama, what, what would you have wanted to do for good people as a governor that you were unable to do? Maybe due to one reason or the other. My greatest regret was that uh, my second term was what I wanted on advice of many, many close friends. For example, my wife uh, was passionate. I was uh, doing cottage industries as part of her own pet program. And she was advising me that uh, we have to find a means of getting young people engaged and educated, not necessarily degree holding, not degree, young people going for degree. She, she advised that I should, and I was going to do it, to start massive technical education. Okay. We are electricians, plumbers, you produce plumber, organizer, and things. And I said, well, let me first of all, stabilize the formal education in getting desk to the schools, uh, paying teachers regularly, paying why I was to start massive technical institutions. If we had had that, we would have a lot of our young people roaming the street, becoming Yahoo boys, doing all kinds of things. Uh, we, 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 we would have created people who, as artisans, who earn more than you, with all your degree, I mean, your degree yeah. will mean that because what you earn as plumber, electrician, I, I regret that I didn't have the chance to do that. Now, Aremo, th there's no arguing the fact that God has been so nice to you. What more do you still want from God? Anytime you go on your knees to pray to I God, what? Nothing. And I repeat it seriously. I don't bother God asking for anything. The rest of what God has done for me is that common song, I cannot say it all at all highly fulfilled satisfied what i do in my prayer is to say to do thanksgiving my mm. prayer every day 
is thanksgiving to God for what He made of my life. I have no ambition whatsoever to have an aircraft. I don't pray to have an aircraft. I'm not interested. Uh, where I live, I'm comfortable. I don't have ambition to build any mansion. I pray that uh, on any aircraft that God wants to give to me, He should give it to you. People, young people coming up. When you, have, when you have your aircraft, you can only give it to me to ride. <laughs> One of my brother goes to his own, his online. I, I, you are new to. I will, I will to bring it in. And it means to buy to build mansions in my own age. I can only come to spend a night. In, in uh, the rest of my life is thanksgiving to God for what God has done for me. He has been. Too, I'm, I, I'm not the brightest in class. In fact, we lost uh, last week. I lost my. Uh, one of my brothers, boys, the, 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 the man used to confess in my class, Professor Lai Modular. We lost him last week. He was always the first in class. I was not the brightest. I will tell you that amongst my classmates, we have very successful, I have very successful, successful classmates, but I'm one of them. I mean, for example, late Nureni Yusuf was chief of Yashka. Yes. He was my classmate. Yeah. Late, wow. I've been a very good day. Was, uh, mm. I, I, Naval officer was my classmate, Nasib Badabosi, former deputy governor of Lagos mm -hmm. State, Dr. Okulaye, my classmate, and my current chairman of the day, Bolaho, was a high class oil, uh, oil and gas uh, entrepreneur. I have many class members associated with Rilu Muse, Rilu Muse, Senator. Was my classmate. Wow. successful, so I can keep on telling you many of my classmates that were highly successful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I thank God. What's your prayer for Nigeria? My prayer is that the younger ones, I pray for them never to lose hope. They must not give up. I pray for them to have the courage to continue to advocate for better Nigeria and for them to have the determination to be involved in creating a better Nigeria. I have been holding high offices when I was only 30, 30 something. Mm. I, I at the time, at the age of 30 something. I, uh, before I was 50, I was already editor. I have been managing director of Ben Israel before I became 40. I mm -hmm. pray for the younger ones, for God to give them the grace, the determination, the ability to make a difference, better, create better Nigeria than we ever that. Uh, As an elder statesman, where would you say Nigeria got it wrong? We got it wrong when the military came in. The military destroyed everything. The military were the, the military coming into governance was the beginning of the problem of Nigeria. And they have been in government longer than anybody until recently. We got it wrong by the military intervention. Although, I can wow. say the job, the, uh, the Zegu meant well, but uh, the, the, the coup didn't go well. And from then on, Nigeria, Nigeria have been in trouble. So finally, Aremo, what is the way out of that quagmire, that log jam, that uh, coup de sac? You know, where Nigeria has found uh, herself or itself. The way out is yes, that the center will devolve power. The center is too mm. powerful. Nobody can run Nigeria from Abuja. It's, it's impossible. Nigeria is too big. I mean, India is not run from the center. Australia, there is devolution. I mean, the individuals are powerful. In Canada, different tribalism everywhere. Even UK, there is heavy tribalism in UK. The Scots are not English. The West are not English. The English are just uh, a tribe in England. And uh, that we, we have to decentralize. We have no choice. Thank you so very much, Ariel.